In this course, we are going to dive into the HID protocol. To start things off, let's have a look at a classic USB configuration. In most cases, a USB configuration is made of a host and a device. There are different kind of host and they can be Windows, Mac, or Linux based. In fact the HID protocol is designed to work across all operating systems, and is meant to replace interfaces such as PS2, serial and parallel ports, and much more. That way, you can have hosts such as laptops, smartphones, tablets, SBCs, and even MCUs. In the other hand, most common devices are mice, keyboards, touchscreens or joysticks. You can also find devices such as crypto hardware wallets, Bray keyboards, or any custom devices you can imagine. By comparison, devices such as hard drives, USB sticks, printers, scanners, MP3 players, or external CD readers are not HID devices. They belong to another USB class. Now let's get into the anatomy of a HID device. In this case, we will see what a USB HID touchscreen is made of. In this picture, we have a touchscreen connected to a Raspberry Pi. We will not focus on the HDMI part as it only concerns the display. The interesting part is the USB cable which is where the data is flowing. To understand how this works, let's have a look at the back of the screen. The big chip at the top is the HDMI controller so we won't talk about it. The small chip at the bottom is a STM32 MCU and it acts as the HID controller. How it works is pretty simple. Whenever a user touches the capacitive panel, the position of the touch is transferred through I2C to the chip. Once the data is received it is then sent through HID to the PC or rather the Raspberry Pi in our case. As most computers don't have a I2C interface, the MCU acts as a bridge between the panel and the host. Now let's study another case, the crypto hardware wallet. Since the boom of cryptocurrencies in 2017, crypto wallets have been all over the place. The most popular one has been the Ledger Nano S which happens to be a HID device. Let's actually break it down. As you can see the Ledger Nano S is made of multiple components. The most important component is the STM32, which handles the HID communication. Let's simplify this picture a little bit. In this schematics, multiple components interact with the MCU throughout different communication protocols. Data are traveling in both directions between the host and the device. For instance, the display is driven by USB reports that are then converted by the MCU to SPI data. In the other hand, button states are sent to the MCU then converted to USB reports. Therefore, a USB device is just a combination of a MCU and a sensor or actuator. Now let's move on the very important section of HID device development. The device descriptor. It is meant to describe the data chunk of the device. The device descriptor is the most important part of the HID device. While the device is first plugged, the device descriptor is sent to the host. So that it can know which kind of device is dealing with, and what type of data are going to flow. For the touchscreen, it will be the X, Y position of the finger and some additional information. For the ledger, it's going to be custom arrays of data, defined by the manufacturer. To end up, let's have a look at the common data reports. Input reports are reports that travel from the device to the host. Whenever we want to receive data from the device, we use input reports. Output reports are reports that travel from the host to the device. Whenever we want to send data to the device, we use output reports. Now that we have a better sense of HID device development, let's actually build our first device. If you've liked this course and wanted to continue learning, you can enroll to the USB HID development course on usbhid.io.